Thoughts on Invincible? I like it. Invincible's good, you know. I feel like it moves a little quick, but it's a pretty good show. I enjoy it. I don't love it as much as everybody else seems to love it, though. Like, I think, like, I enjoy it. I think it's good. I'm looking forward to a second season, but, you know, I'm not, like, in love with it like a lot of people are. Like, I just think, like, oh, this is pretty good. J.K. Simmons is an amazing voice actor for that for that fucking character, though. Like, it, especially just because the character just straight up looks like J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> like, it's, it's not even... Omni-Man just looks like J. Jonah Jameson. Like, actually for real. Like, exactly the same. Also, I will say, the one thing that I don't understand... The music choice for Invincible is kind of weird. Because, like, some of it is, like, Run the Jewels, and it, like, it's cool. But then it's, like... Then you have, like, Jet in there to close the season out. And it feels... It feels like a show that... Invincible feels like a show that came out in like 2006, you know, that's not a bad thing because it, it like it reminds me a lot of Teen Titans in that way Where it's like, oh, this is like really good kind of um, uh, Oh, the hives. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get them mixed up because <laughs> they're the same band uh, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like am I the only one who feels like in Invincible is like kind of like weirdly dated? Not in like a bad way, but just like in like a, this is definitely like it's not, I don't mean it as like a point of negativity. Because it's like nostalgic. In a weird way. It reminds me a lot of Teen Titans. Like it just does. I think it's because it's so faithful to the almost 20 year old comic. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it's just the way they use music. You know? Like the Run the Jewels feels modern and then like you have fucking the hives to close out the season and it's like Seems kind of just bizarre. <laughs> I love things that, that feel dated, by the way. Like, I, I don't think dated is a bad thing. Like, the, the, the fucking Spider-Man Raimi trilogy is dated as fuck, and I love it. I remember watching the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy when I was young, and I now have a natural fear of yelling J.K. Simmons. Dude, Whiplash was traumatizing. You know? <laughs> Amber's a bitch. Amber sucks. <laughs> I don't like Amber. Oh my god. I, I shouldn't say she, she's not the worst character. Like, I actually don't... I actually can't think of it. I actually hate Rexplode most. Like, Rexplode sucks. Like, he's the most irritating character in the show, like, without a fucking... Without a doubt. Like, the worst character on that show is Rexplode. Like, absolute for real. Because he just... He comes across to me as... Hey, you remember Deadpool? What if we had Deadpool? You know? Like, what if we put Deadpool in this? And it's just like, oh my god, just get over it. Like, I get it. You're just... You're loud and obnoxious and annoying and you never shut up and you think you're really funny. Terrible. Terrible character. Irritating. Hope he dies. Sincerely. Like, it would not hurt me at all. Uh, and the thing that bothers me about Amber is like... Like, she knows he's invincible, but then, like, flips out on him for, like, being invincible and saving them. Like, you, you got mad at him because he abandoned you while some, cr some fucking monster was attacking you. But then he showed up as a superhero and you're still mad? Like, he didn't leave. Like, your entire premise for being angry is, in like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, genuinely, Mary Jane Watson in Spider-Man 3 had way more of a reason to be angry at, like, Peter Parker than Amber has to be mad at Invincible. Like, for, with, like it makes no sense. I remember watching Spider-Man 3 recently as, like, an adult and thinking, like, wow, MJ is, like, just completely in the right here. You know? Because like, when I was a kid, I was like, Spider-Man's... That's Spider-Man. Peter Parker's awesome. Like, he's the best. Like, he can't be in the wrong because he's the hero. You know? But then I watch it, like... The last year, and I was like, holy shit, Peter Parker's a real shithead. Like, he really sucks. Like, he is the villain in that movie. You know? <laughs> like, I totally... Like, it's wild. I, I will be honest, guys. Like, as much as I like Invincible, 
And this is this is by the way a testament to how 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 good Invincible is. It is really good. I hate Superman stories. I hate Superman archetypes. I hate Superman heroes. They're the worst heroes that exist. They're fucking boring. They're bland. They're fucking just the least interesting superheroes that you could possibly write about. Nobody gives a shit about superheroes that can fly and are invulnerable and can lift the planet and just destroy everything. It's fucking lame. There's a reason why Spider-Man is the penultimate most fucking popular character in fucking a any superhero media to date. And there's a reason why that's true. And it's because he's way more interesting than Superman. Sorry. He even works better in, like, a fucking video game. Think about how long we've had good video games. Right? How many opportunities there have been to make a good Superman video game? Can't do it. He is inherently uninteresting in every way that you could possibly, possibly write him. He's uninteresting in stories. He's uninteresting in movies. He's uninteresting in video games. He's the worst. Fuck him. It's been 20 years since we've had 3D graphics and not a single good Superman game. How the fuck? How do you manage that? You're making me mad, man. Sorry. Stop talking about Superman. You don't get it. You I do get, get it. it. No, you don't get it. I do get it. Superman, video game wise, I agree. He can't really have a video game. He can do too. Many he can't things. have anything. Movie wise, he can absolutely have a movie. Superman works as a character. He very much so does. There is no Superman movie that is as good. I agree. As as I, the best Spider Man movie. I agree, but everyone that's read Superman has had the same perspective you have, which is the wrong one. Well, you try to show off how super he is. You don't show off how super Superman is. You show off uh, how human he is. Right. He's a fa he's he he's the most relatable other than Spider Man, I think. Like Spider Man is number one. Spider Man is the most relatable hero of all time. That's why he's endured so long. Yeah. There's also a reason why Superman has endured so long is because under all that bullshit, when he takes his cape off, when he's fucking a regular, he's just a regular dude. He works at a fucking newspaper place. Superman. He's a journalist. He fucking helps people just for the kinds of his heart. He can, he don't have to do shit. There's Superman. So Superman. Yeah, it's just not ignorant. I'm gonna get really fucking mad. Superman is Citizen Kane. No, it's not. It is. He yeah. was there first, and people appreciate it. That's nice. I'm glad you were here no, first to kind of do this. But, but we've we've moved on. We have better characters now. Superman. Infinitely better characters. Superman. Infinitely more interesting uh, powers to go off of. It's just. It was the very first in assumption of what like a super person could be. Ah, uh, fly or like jump originally. Yeah, he could just jump real high. Ooh. He could fly. He can go to the fucking space. He can he reverse can time to, for some to, reason. That was that was a bad period of time for everybody. That was a bad period of time for everybody, absolutely. Everybody. I don't know, man. Every everyone. Because this because they look look, I as I am a Spider Man, I will die I would die for the idea of Spider Man. The idea of Spider-Man, I'm willing to die for. The way that I see Superman is kind of uh, is kind of close to the way that I see Master Chief in a weird way, where it's like he's just kind of like a symbol oh, yeah. of you know what humanity can be. Yeah, that's you know, so he's fantastic. an ideal, but that's what makes him unrelatable. I don't relate to Master Chief at all. I just think he's cool and I like him, but kind the, of. But the thing about Superman is that there are moments Superman is the most human out of everyone around him. He's just, he's just like a regular dude. Like I understand like that. Everyone, there's been times but, he, I, but I know that he isn't. But the thing is that... The he's thing never is, really in any danger. The thing, he isn't in danger. Only see? because they threw in some fucking radioactive rock because no, they had to. No, there's times he's in danger because... The thing you is could that, shoot Spider-Man in the head. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is that Superman is... It's Superman Spider-Man could get cancer and die. <laughs> you know, Spider-Man's as... Not, maybe not cancer. I think, I think he's immune to cancer now. I think all that radiation... I'm sure there's probably some cancer, cancer that he can get, though. But the thing about Superman is that there are moments of Superman, everybody's talking about all the wild shit they did. Superman's like, yeah, I, I worked at a farm. I lived on a farm my whole fucking life. And they're like, what? And he's like, yeah, I lived on a farm. I'm just a dude who fucking shucked hay and fucking probably helped horses graze. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because he's he's it not... It does matter because that's part... That is... You see, the thing is that you're seeing just Superman. Clark Kent is part of the character like Peter's a part of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. There's more than just one side of them. And that's why I love Superman. Superman is a dichotomy of all the greatness, but you can still be a regular person. But you can't be a regular person if you're invulnerable. That's the thing that's kind of inherently 
contradictory. The thing, the thing like, no matter how relatable Superman pretends to be when he's shucking hay, even though it weighs like an ounce to him, so it's not even really work. It's he's just going through the motions to pretend to be somebody that he's not, no, he which is kind of pathetic. That's not pathetic. I kind of would prefer it if he was just as Superman as he could possibly be. I respect that. That's so respectable. Why? Like that. Because he understands. That it's so patronizing. He understands our lives and he respects the way we live he our lives. He can't understand. He does though. He gets it. His mom will age and die one day. He'll cry like I will. There have been more than one time where he's become just human. He's become as human as me and you, and he just lives his life, and he's fine with it. He's like, eh, whatever. I'll be, I'm fine as Clark Kent. My life is just as great. I can't save people, which sucks that I want to help people, but... It's just, it doesn't... To me, it's just, like, not some... Like, him working at a farm is equivalent to me sleeping. I like, it's literally no effort for him. I at all. I respect that, because that's, that's just what humanity is, you know? It's he not respectable to, to do something that requires no effort. It's, it's not no effort. It's all the time he's... He could be... Think of all this he could be doing. He could have came to Earth and just completely dominated humanity. But he's like, no, I respect humans. I, re I, look, at, I look at their lives, and I see how they live every day, and I know it's hard for them. And I, you know what? I respect that. I respect right. that so much that I can't even relate to my own people anymore. Because I've been here so long. I am a, he's effectively a human being. I understand, but I inherently can't relate to him. Why can't you relate to him? Because I can't don't relate have, to an invincible person. Don't you have, he's not invincible. He's a, he's ostensibly he invincible. He's physically very strong and maybe physically very durable, but he has all the same weaknesses that you and I have. What one the day, fuck are you talking one day about? He will age and all die. right. One day you age and die. He, he has all the same weaknesses that we have. Yes, he can still. Be, yeah. People can still beat people beat the shit out of Superman because he's really big scale on Earth. When he leaves Earth, there are people out there that'll dick him. They'll fuck him. This is objectively wrong. You're Chris. Chris. It's just Chris, objectively incorrect. Chris, on Earth, Superman is a huge deal, and in space, he's commendable and respectable. But off in the galaxy, he could get fucked up by mongrel. By fucking, by Sinestro, by Doomsday, the guy that pulled up and killed him. He can get fucked up by a lot of people. He and, and I understand, I understand he's supposed to be the height of where we are. Like, oh, he's the big deal on Earth. And he's one of the strongest heroes. I'd give him that. He's done some wild shit, particularly in the older times. He was fucking, he sneezed a part of a galaxy or some shit. And I was just like, wow, that's crazy. I can't even understand this. I don't want this comic anymore. But he's still, I still love what he represents. That's cool. I love seeing him be a dad with his son and just being a father. That's so nice. He goes out and plays catch with his son. He has a fucking dog, dude. He has a standard dog. He just plays with his dog. That's so huge. That's what people do. This is a very low bar. That's, that's not a low bar. It's a low bar. He that's has a, a low, dog? That's a low bar. <laughs> it's not a low, it might be a low bar for a regular person, but in context of what he is, that makes him so much more respectable. Because he still chooses to be beside us, even though he does not have to walk by us. He chooses. He, he's a god that can choose to be a god, but he chooses to walk amongst men. Because he respects but he the can't, endeavors of man. But he can't not be a god, though. He cannot be a god. Absolutely, he cannot be a god. He can't not be a god, is what I'm saying. He could just not use his powers, and he's be a person. He'd be as durable as he normally is. If I shot Superman it. in the head, would he live? I mean, if you got, you got a gun made of a fucking pebble, you can, you can do that and kill him. If I shoot him with a standard gun. No, no he'll be fine. Yeah. I can't. But how, well, okay, I that's... can't. They had to invent a fake rock for him. That's... They had to invent a. They had but to literally be like, "Oh my can't. God, but we so made an uninteresting. We made an uninteresting character here who's in who cannot but be defeated. By, by what do we that... do? Let's make a fake planet logic, made of things." Really. Also, why why is it the rock that they're from that weakens him? It I don't know. It got radiated over some bullshit. But you can't shoot Spider-Man in the head. Huh? You can't just shoot Spider-Man in the head. He'll just dodge it like every time. You could shoot Spider-Man in the head. No, you probably can't. Yeah, you could. Who's ever sh The only Spider-Man that ever been shot was the one that was made weaker on purpose. Not to mention he was involved in a bunch of bullshit when he got shot. If you walked up to Spider-Man and shot him while he was sleeping, he would dodge without even knowing it. I don't think that's true. That's 110% true. I don't think that's true, man. That's 100%. You're choosing to believe what you want right now. I, I just don't think he's as invulnerable. Spider-Man is pretty fucking crazy. You think Spider-Man is anywhere near fucking no, Superman? Not, I never said that, but I'm saying he's pretty fucking crazy. Spider-Man literally dodges bullets in the PS4. Well, no, you, no shit, he can dodge bullets, he but can he can dodge. also get hit. 
He can also get. He's hit been by... shot in so many things. He's been shot in a few things. He's been shot in a lot of. Th I can remember few several things. things that he's been shot in. A few things that are. I'm talking... I, I remember in the comics he got shot. I remember in the in the in fucking comic, in, comics... in in the show he got shot in the movie. He got shot. In the comics, he got shot because he didn't have a spider sense. He's been shot several times, dude. He's been shot on spider sense. He got shot once. I'll admit that. And the other one, he was a weaker person who was engaged in trying to save his parents, his family's life. So he got shot because he took a bullet for somebody. Spider-Man, as defunct Spider-Man, literally, literally bullets are pretty much ineffective against him. But he still has to dodge he them. he can just dance. So, but he's do him dodging doesn't mean anything. Him Kingston. Do him dodging, him dodging is like me. Dodging walking. is at least effort because Chris, he knows that if he doesn't dodge, Chris, he'll die. Chris, dodging for someone like Spider-Man is like me or you blinking. No, it's not. Yes, Kingston, okay. It is. No. Kingston. That's why Let's, he can Let do me give you a, so let me well. give you let me give you a hypothetical. You're in a room, right? Spider-Man is in a in a 4x4 four four, like just standard ass box room like this. The wall is all fucking muzzles from guns. All muzzles, right? Every single square inch okay. of the wall so is a you, barrel of a gun. So if, if they paint, all fire at once, Spider-Man is dead. He's paint, dead. He's a paint, dead man. He's a, not surviving. If you paint a situation, he can't dodge. If you paint a situation where his most important, one of his most important abilities is useless, then yes, he can die. But if I paint a situation where I'm shooting kryptonite bullets at Superman, he'll die. But you need a fake thing to kill him. That's need, what I'm saying. Need, That's what I'm saying. All you need to kill Spider-Man is a bullet. Chris, in the right place. Chris, but to stop Spider-Man, all you need is a means to prevent what his biggest power is, which is his ability to move. His ability to dodge. Do you understand how many times Spider-Man has gotten hit by things that aren't even, like... It, not even just supervillain things. He's been hit by normal fucking people. Spider-Man has never been hit by a normal person at his prime, or there was not something else going on. There's always something else going on. Something like something like an He's also died several times. Like an ex so is Superman. That's not but he's point. died through fake shit. This is what I'm saying. No, he got beat to death. By what? By Doomsday. Someone By what? stronger than him By what? beat him to death. They had to invent somebody arbitrarily stronger than but him to do right. it. But obviously, you're not going to get beat to death. Dr. Octopus Spider isn't stronger than Spider-Man. Dr. Octopus didn't beat Spider-Man to death. Dr. Right. Right. Octopus twitched his Here mind with this. What I'm saying is that can happen to anyone. That can happen to just anyone. That's Tell not a good Tom point. Sweeney that his take you on have to wrong. take shit Thank out you. of fantasy to hurt Superman. You All you need to hurt Spider-Man is something that exists. In the re a car, a train, a bus, a gun, a fist. Chris, it literally Chris, is so easy. Chris, if you in comparison, Chris, Chris, if the strongest boxer on this planet punched Spider-Man in the face, his arm would break. His arm would turn into rubble. He would punch him, and his arm would break. There was a comic where Spider-Man was fighting a heavyweight boxer, and the boxer punched him, and he broke his arm. Because Spider-Man's not a normal person. Don't get me wrong, Superman is at the highest of the high, but there's even people that can beat him. Spider-Man has dodged punches from Spider -Man, Silver. Spider That's nuts! Spider-Man... Fight... His villains are, like, kingpin. And, like... Fucking f like he's just a fat guy. Kingpin. He's a fat man. Kingston. Kingston? Spider-Man villain. That's he's more of a, a fat Deadpool man. Villain. You ever seen the Rhino? Have you seen more Loon? What are you saying? Have you seen fucking Electro? Those are fucking not regular people. Electro fucking blacked out New York City, bro. That's crazy. That's a lot of electricity. He just ate up. Spider-Man so just fights gangs and bank robbers and shit. He does. He does definitely usually do that because he's more ground level. But there's moments where he fights people. Doc Ock, fucking Carnage, my guy. Well, that's what? an alien. That's carnage like in the realm. Is, that's like the fantasy realm. Carnage shit. is literally a nightmare. That is a nightmare that he fights. Mm. That's his one. Of, that's his. That's his most. I would say his highest peak villain is Carnage, and that guy's terrifying. That guy's so terrifying. His dad's afraid of him. <laughs> I just think that Superman gets a lot of bad credit because people see him as such a big thing. But the thing is that Superman himself is not a big thing. There's nothing special about him to himself. Who? There's a whole race of people like Superman. Okay. He just happens to be here with us. Yeah. But he never puts himself above anybody else. He never says he's better than anybody else. People are just intimidated. Because by he isn't. People are intimidated by something that's granted them just by design. 
They're like, oh, this guy sucks because he's better than what I can be. And the thing is that he's not better than what you can be. His whole belief is that you guys are better than me. You guys live your lives with vulnerabilities while I walk around invulnerable. That's respectable. I guess. How are you? How do you guess? I like Omni Man better. I I don't like Omni Man better than Superman. Omni Man's way better. I mean, that's your opinion. Yeah, uh, no shit. Omni Man's a piece of shit. What do you mean? Of course, that's my who, opinion. Who agreed to fucking his pet? Who fucking admitted to fucking his pet? You like a man at a fucking pet? Yeah. You into putt fuckers? He admits it. He admits, he admits it. So it. You respect it. You respect it. He admits it. it. So he, he knows. That he fucks back. Superman just can't admit it. Superman. Superman just can't admit that uh, Lois Lane is gonna die and he's gonna be alone one day and he's gonna be realize that he's, it's just it doesn't mean anything to him. That's crazy. That's you're you're, you're tripping. You're tripping. You are a large capping right now. I don't care, man. I just I think he's really boring. And that's literally just that's the end of it. That's the end of it. That's he's true. just really bland to me. I've never seen any Superman story that was even vaguely interesting. That's I've never crazy. seen a, a, a situation where Superman was even remotely relatable in any sense. That's so crazy. That's so much of his character him just being relatable. What what is it? What is that's he? Because so he because he he lifts thousand pound hay ba hay bales like it's nothing. No, because he just lives like you would live. He no, he, he doesn't. He no, he doesn't. Yes, he, he does. He does not live how I would live. He doesn't exist like you would If live. I was Superman, I would not live that way. That because I'm a true. person. I'm a normal person who understands how awesome it is to have power like that. That is what's. That is the most unrelatable thing about Superman that to me. Is, is that he doesn't use his powers really. To the full extent that he could. Wow, it's insane to me. What? It's the least relatable thing in the fucking world. That is so crazy because not even Spider-Man does that. No one does that. Oh my god. No it, one does that to and the it's a, extent. And it's a point of massive contention that I have with most superheroes. And yet Spider-Man is still way more relatable. Spider-Man, I would say he just is. is the most relatable, but I would say he's the He is the most relatable by miles and miles of, of, think, of think, desolate land. I think your information about heroes is only a little bit of what Spider-Man is. And then like, oh, I like Spider-Man because I've seen him the most or I know the most about him. When there's a ton of people who are relatable. There's some people that's just related about Spider-Man. Punisher is just some guy with PTSD. Fuck, my uncle got that. He's hella relatable. Who? <laughs> Punisher. He does some dude PTSD. He acts on his problems, which makes him a little crazy than most. But yeah. That's it, you know? There's people like fucking... Who, who else is hella relatable? Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a dude that's trying to do good. He's good with a bow and arrow. You know what I mean? People are there good with bow and arrows. It's very boring. That's very boring. Bo that's a bow and arrow is very... Dis but that's it's just whatever. Though. That's like, this guy's relatable. I understand, but it's you, to have a good character. It has to be a lot of different things. It has to be you have to relate to him. He has to be interesting, and his move set needs to be interesting as well. And that, to me, is why Spider-Man has been as popular as he is for so long. Because there is no other character that operates like that. It's just it's just completely alien. And if you see it in something else. It's immediately obvious that it would be like a ripoff or something. I don't agree with that. In the same way that Superman actually is because he's just the base archetype of what a superhero is. He's just like default superhero is like Superman. And you know that. Yeah, he is. He's the Yeah, he's superhero. the default. He's fucking he's the white first. rice. He's the first. He's like, oh, he's the first like super strong, super fast or anything. Guy. But not everyone is as relatable as, super, as Spider as like him because he, he's like, the way he does. Not every fucking celestial superhero is fucking on I understand, being. but what I'm saying is Spider Man is relatable and exceedingly unique spider-man is i would say spider-man is that is the that is the dance the balance that I, makes that character so fucking cool i i agree with you on that but there are other characters who are relatable and unique at the same time there's no a ton of them. there's very few there's a ton of them spider-man is, is objectively like one of the most unique characters i think that has ever been invented I, I say, ever I ever very, actually period I would just say like unique yes one of the most unique combo characters i'd say yes Absolutely. In, in characters other, in general. But there's a ton of other characters. Hawkeye? He's an archer. Okay. That's Hawkeye. Batman, rich man. Okay. Okay. Like, he's just a martial artist, Batman. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a rich psychopath. That's all he is. Yeah, that's it. That's he's it. Some rich dude. Superman is just an invulnerable god. Okay. But Green Lantern's a, like a very fucking, what you call a very relatable guy. He is relatable. Very, he's a cop. He's also interesting in the sense that the ring power is unique, but it's also really silly looking and dumb. How is it silly looking and dumb? The I ring power, like... come on, it's like Wonder Twins activate. It's it just, it, the whole ring thing is just a bit silly. His ring is his bat. it's pretty much his sword, it's his bat. I understand it's that, but it's just, I understand that, but it's just kind of like a silly, <laughs> it's just a fucking, si it's a silly looking power. The Green Lantern is like, probably, I, I guarantee you if you asked most people if they think Green Lantern is lame, they would say yes. 
Because he just he kind of is. Because the thing is, everybody thinks every, people people a lot of people thought that fucking what you think Thor is lame before they saw him in the things. Thor is kind of lame. Thor is fucking. I don't think Thor's because he's just Thor. It's just okay. It's, it's it'd be like in Marvel's Jesus. Yeah, you know, like that's fucking cool. Like that's all right, cool. you know. That's not cool. What he's capable of. Like I don't. I think I think your thing is that Spider Man is relatable because Spider Man comes from where you come from, and he he does similar things to you. He comes so from I, where he comes from where we come from. He's a kid. He, he, see, see, the thing that is, is the defining. I'm sorry, Kingston. That is the defining characteristic of Spider-Man. Yeah, it, it, it is. It was a long time Sweet ago. Spider-Man. Has not it is the kid. reason why he is popular. Spider-Man has not been a kid for so. In fact, people hate kid Spider-Man. I am so You're done. Out of your I'm, mind, dude. Ask. You're ask, out of your mind. Ask any of the millions of comic book fans. I don't give a fuck about, about comic book fans. Feel about Spider-Man. I don't give kid a fuck Spider-Man about those people. Spider-Man doesn't go through any of the shit that make you that makes you love him. Oh man. He doesn't go through any of that shit. Literally, literally, none of that is any. Literally, of Miles Morales is uh, the new kid Spider-Man, and he's the most popular version of that character in modern history. Yes, Miles is because, because he's kid Spider-Man, and because also he 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 defines two other groups that are really defined in comics. But he's also kid Spider-Man. But his, his biggest thing is not because he's a kid. It's because of the groups he comes from and the way he define what he represents. It's not he's a kid. People, I don't yo fuck kid superheroes. They're so boring. Is that this? is so fucking that wild that you would so say that. Chris, that you would say Chris, that a kid superhero is boring, even though there's only there was only one there was at only a certain one, point. Chris, but the most generic archetype of Chris, a superhero is Chris, like super relatable and interesting. Chris, You're out of your mind. Chris, he, You've lost it. Chris. You, you're out of your gourd, man. Chris, Spider-Man was a kid for like seven. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a reach for you. He was a ish kid for like 20 years in his comic. And then he was just not a kid anymore. You're, and he still persisted for years. For years when they decided, let's make him a boy again. Comic book time means nothing Chris, to talking, anybody. Chris, I'm talking about what he went through, his experiences. He was out of college before everything you know about him happened. He really? Was already he was in, out of college when Uncle Ben died. Name something else that happened when he was. Oh, oh, oh. Name the, ma- the name, main defining name, thing. Name another thing. Oh, name when he got his thing. powers. Name another thing other than that. Name, <laughs> name, something that name, something, name something that happened to him. You're out of your mind. Name something that happened to him outside of him getting his powers within his first issue. Name that happened. Na- of name him. things that are very popular about Spider-Man, except for the things that would that would go Those against my two argument. Things happened for him in high school, right? What else happened for him in high school? He met he met MJ. Oh, another thing. He met MJ. Oh yeah. I don't even think he met Harry yet. <laughs> he met MJ and and that's it. Then everything else happens in college. You're out of your board, man. Stacy's death, one of the most his most defining moment as a character. Yeah. Other than his uncle dying was after college. Oh yeah. Well after that. That's very cool. That's such an important part of the character. It is a very important part of the character. The Except that- here's the thing. The thi- the reason why Spider-Man took off in the first place was, he was, was because he was a kid, That's and true. that was unique but, and interesting. But the thing is that he has not persisted. It doesn't he was a matter. Kid. It does. It matter. doesn't. It does because you can take off because of something. But then if that thing is the only thing about Let, you, people it, won't no, care. No, but un- listen, I'm talking about the world and how they see Spider-Man. This is how Spider-Man is defined. He's a kid. He's that is not. the def- that it- that's not how he's defined. That's how he's defined to you. What is the first part? What is what is what do you think of when you think of Goku? I think of Goku. I think of Saiyan. No, but what version of Goku do you think of when you think of Goku? I think of adult Dragon Ball Z Goku. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's the one I saw the most. Right. Exactly. But, the thing but is you that, don't think of one, but do, but do you think you don't think of Kid Goku? When I think of Goku as a good character, I think of Kid Goku. You don't think of Kid Goku because as a good character, characters Kid Goku. characters in fiction can age and de-age all they fucking want. But what, what only thing that matters is at the point at which they become a phenomenon. That is how Spider-Man, people are defined. But thing, a character at a specific stage is how they will remain in the public consciousness for the eternity of their entire existence, unless they surpass that, which that is, they just don't. I agree, I agree. But Peter Parker, Spider-Man, surpassed his kid self in leaps and bounds. But it doesn't any, matter. Any of the stories that people, I, that people like, oh, this story about Spider-Man is so beautiful, or this moment of Spider-Man is so beautiful, all of them happen well after he's grown up. Because as a kid, you can only experience so much. No one gives a shit about Kid Spider-Man other than kids. Exactly. Other than kids. Only kids care about Kid Spider-Man. You're out of your mind, man. Only kids care about Kid Spider-Man. 
That's so you're never gonna be in the adult span of Spider-Man. So I'm like, oh my god, I love 16 year old Peter Parker swinging through New York City and fucking people up. People, I'm like, I don't really care about that. Oh man, I love Craven's Last Hunt. Oh man, I love the death of Gwen Stacy. You might say your I mind. his first comic because that's true. His origin is very important. And that's where he gets the foundation from. But his character is so much more than him as a kid. Yeah, the ultimate, yeah. The ultimate comics are really not that popular, bro. As someone who owns them, bro, people don't really care about the ultimates. What are you talking about? That was one of the most popular runs. No, it was not, bro. That's the run that I know about, and I don't even give a fuck that's the about... the you know about, because that one came out probably when you were younger, but... I, I didn't, know, I didn't people, buy comics, Kingston. People, I don't give a shit about that entire medium. People, fuck that medium, to be quite honest. That's true. And... That's the only run that I know. People, people. Because it's extremely popular. They were bestsellers, man. People didn't give a fuck about the Ultimates. Why did they sell so he well? He died. Literally until he died, bro. You're telling me this. I read comics. Congratulations. Regularly. So that means that one. Do you study the charts of them? Yes. The, the economics, I mean, how well they sell? I know a comics are. Dude, I know a lot about comic books. Because not only do I constantly keep myself involved in it, I, that's why I'm saying that most of Peter Parker's moments are well, well, well after that. The Ultimates was very good, right? But the thing is that they still canceled the Ultimate Universe and they were like, right. kill Peter Parker, we don't want this anymore. Mm. Then he died and people were like, oh man, this Peter Parker died, it's so cool. Then they made Miles and they continued it. And then guess what? They, they still made a X. kid Spider-Man. Yes, because it was a restart. Yes. They restarted, they were like, okay, cool, yes. let's kill it. And they did and it they because the universe. they did it because they know because that kid Spider-Man is the most marketable one. Exactly. That's Why it. do you think he's the most marketable one? They because the kid is, there's always going to be new kids. No, he's yes. the most marketable one because that is Spider-Man. No. No one gives a fuck about Dude. kid Superman. No Dude. one gives a fuck about kid Hawkeye. No one gives a fuck Chris. about kid Wonder Woman. Chris. People like kid Spider-Man because name? that is is the character no, it is no, that's the reason why no he's one famous gives a shit about kid spider it's the reason it's the reason maybe, maybe mcu fans like kid spider-man no but no one cares about him because nothing happens to him then. no film fans probably like college spider-man because that's what like no told me where i wasn't fooling anybody <laughs> Tony McGuire's not fooling anybody. He was anybody. like 27 in he was high school. <laughs> Tony McGuire was clearly 52. Joe and Manganiello and was like 28 when he was like, I wouldn't fight me either. And I was just like, bro, this guy's older than me right now. He's gonna beat up a fucking 14 year old kid, this fucking 30 year old. But it's not a 14. If, if you beat up a, if you beat up a 27 year old that says he's 14, are you an asshole? I, here's what I'm saying. I think if you ask the majority of human beings on the planet Earth like what they think of when they think of Spider-Man, they would think of Kid Spider-Man. They I, just would. I, they I would. Because they they would even maybe think of these things that you're talking about after college and shit. But they would for some. And I know this because I know people who don't know know comics that well, but know these things. They would associate and attribute those activities or or those events but to they, Kid Spider-Man. The thing is that they attribute that to the Spider-Man moniker. Spider-Man's moniker is when I look at Spider-Man, I don't see a kid because I see Spider-Man. Mm. Peter Parker is the only one that is ever a kid or, or not. You're saying people like kids Spider-Man. I'm talking about no. the majority of people. No, I'm not talking about comic book fans. I'm not even talking about I comic don't give a shit about those all. people. When I think of Spider-Man, right? I think of Spider-Man in his, his gear, right? His I suit. I think of Spider-Man entirety of his, his Spider-Man suit, right? And that is ambiguous to his age or anything. That's what most people think of. They probably think of just the, the suited up Spider-Man. If you ask most but people, they would say... if you tell me the moments of Spider-Man's life, like, oh, what's something really cool to happen? Oh, like, oh, Uncle Ben died, right? All right, cool. Oh, um... What else? Uh, he got his powers, right? And then they'll start naming things that happened to Spider-Man as an adult when it wasn't a kid anymore. Because most people don't care about Peter Parker. Yeah, he's just a kid, no older than my son. Yeah, that was like one of the one of the biggest lines in that movie. That was the movie. It's exactly right. That, was the movie. that is. And then, and then what makes I think you're really underestimating how many people know Spider-Man purely from the movies. I would say maybe a lot of younger people. I would say seventy percent of the people who know about Spider-Man know him from the movies. I don't Sincerely. Think so. I don't think so. You don't think so? I would say. I would say. You think most people are reading comics these days? I would say most over fifty. Most over because he's been around, so people probably just heard of him. Because there's a bunch of older people on the planet that definitely just know about Spider-Man because they've just heard about him for so long. He's persisted for so many years. Mm. But the thing is that Spider-Man has persisted because of the combination of what he is. His foundation of a being a child is definitely a lot of the help of it. But he would have disappeared if he wasn't constantly as enjoyable as he was. 
At first, he was a kid. Stanley even said that. What helped him start off was he was a child. That's very true. And he was a kid that put on a suit, and then he was a man. He could do whatever he wanted. He got to pretend who he was. Smokey knows him from the movie. That's, that's most people just don't read comics. It's just it's true. It's but people just, just, most people, people don't just know about things. They know about things. Like I don't know exactly. I didn't really always know about um, like let's say uh, King Arthur or something like that. I didn't know about that, but I just heard of it because mm-hmm. that character is very popular. So people just talk about him. I think I've read like eight comics in my life. <laughs> I I I would say that Spider Man as a character has persisted so long because of all he is, not so much just. Him being a kid. It does have to do with all he is, but what I'm saying is the reason why he was even a, a thing to pay attention to in the first place was, was, was because he was a kid. Was and it was different. different and interesting. And no one would give a shit. No one no one would give a shit about kid Superman. No one would give a shit about kid Batman. No one no one does give a shit about kid Batman. They literally skip over that entire part of his life because it's boring. No one cares. He's a sad kid. Literally the, the defining moment of Batman's life happens when he's a kid and no one wants to hear from him. No one wants to hear from kid Batman at all. No one's interested. Because no one's even vaguely. That's, that's not the interesting part of Batman. Batman's interesting part is right. going around fucking people up. When he's an adult. But the thing is when that... people think of Batman, they think of like some guy in his like 30s or 40s in a fucking bat suit beating up people who probably should just be in a, a hospital, like a yeah, like a, a mental institution getting help and not being beaten up. Being but a fucking rich man, like a rich ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like you know, the Spider-Man thing... is that one character that's like. I would say Spider-Man and the X-Men are the only two characters that persisted because of they were kids. The X-Men were young when they first started, and that's why they gained the popularity. Because the X-Men are, I would say the X-Men comic book-wise, are more popular than Spider-Man is. Wait, what are you saying? I would say the X-Men are about, I would say about as popular. I wouldn't say more popular. Bro, uh, Kid Spider-Man is extremely important to the character, at least uh, his kid-like personality, Tom Holland. Uh, I don't know, but I'm not going to get into Tom Holland. I really like Tom Holland. Yeah, same. But Actually, I love Tom Holland. I hate what they do with the character. Well, that's what I mean. I, th- I think he's just okay. Because they're, they're, um, not, they're not letting him be, do, do better. And this really makes me mad. It's like, oh, he could be doing so much more with his power instead of just chasing pussy. Because he doesn't co- become Batman until he's an adult. Spider-Man gets bitten when he's 14. I understand that. But what I'm 15, saying is... He's not 14. But, well, yeah. 15. But, like, let's imagine for a moment you have a story. You have a story about a character who goes through, like, a harrowing, so a harrowing loss. You have a character that goes through, like, a really, really important loss in his family, right? A horrible... You know, his parents are dead. In a normal story, you would follow that character. <laughs> you would follow that character after after that. You would see like, okay, how does he how does he deal with that? What does he do to kind of deal with the trauma of it? But no one cares about that in Batman because they just accept that he went to a cave and trained, and now he's like, thirty years later, he's like a fucking reasonable force. <laughs> I think I think the thing about well, that's that's the reason. Like, the thing is that I feel like roughly any kid character can be marketable and usable. Just that no one has... No, Spider-Man did it first, one. So when it comes to kid characters, he's like the Superman of kids' characters. Well, it's also just... That's inherently what well, it is. Well, no, because... He is. No, no, because... The, it's, no one I, else, I wouldn't say that. No one else is going to be a good kid character like Spider-Man. Well, that is that is true, but it's also... I, 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 don't think it, I don't think it's because he was first. I think it's because it's so uniquely tied to just who he is as a character not not necessarily just like how he interacts with people or his like personality but literally in just the design of that character like j- just the way spider-man stands is like iconic and just just the way that he like perches on ledges and shit no one no one batman standing there's no iconic batman stance there just isn't I mean, Spider-Man... Maybe the Dark Knight Returns when he's on the roof, maybe. But that's I, just a standing man. I don't... You know? Don't... Everything about Spider-Man is iconic. The way he moves, the way he talks, everything about... The way he moves through the environment is say... wholly, wholly unique to him. There's no other creature or being in fiction that moves that way. I would say he's Spider- so unique, dude. The way dude. Spider-Man travels his webs, that's very unique. I would say Even people with grappling hooks don't move around oh, like yeah. that. Spider-Man's webs are very neat to him. I say Spider-Man's webs are neat to him. It's not about his webs. It's literally just the way he, he the way well, he moves well, with those, them. Those are his just webs. The, that's no, 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 no. Because they could transport. just as easily be grappling hooks. They could just as easily be using grappling hooks, and it would make no difference. The because the that, way that he like contorts his body and like fucking does all these like weird acrobatic shit, that in tandem with just like the, the flexibility and, and like just the the design of the character not, all of it is iconic every single element of spider-man but even his origin unique. is, not most, his is origin, iconic his origin is unique i'll give him that because he's a kid that's right too, it's not the spider it is the spider what no the yes, spider the spider is what makes the the powers unique 
But the no. kid part of that is what makes the hero unique. That is why Spider-Man has stuck I, the test of time I, because he is the kid. He was. He was. He the always kid. will be, dude. No, he, was. he always I will be. I firmly stand by. He was. He all always will be. All of the Spider-Man will get old. He'll get married. He'll have kids. He'll he'll and be. And make him a kid. Again. No, no, no. He'll, no, 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 no. He'll Spider-Man will be a kid. He'll have he'll have a wife and kids. He'll he'll be in a retirement home. He'll maybe be in a wheelchair at some point. He can go through all of that. But when people think of Spider-Man, they're not going to think of that whole thing. They're going to think of a particular point in that in that life, and they and most people go to the start. I don't. Think people, most, most people do. People go to Spider-Man, but, but that's but see this is this is what confuses me because you're saying Spider-Man. Spider-Man as a character, every Spider-Man is more than just the Spider-Man themselves, and I think that's why. But that's, and that's a huge problem with the fan base of Spider-Man now is they don't understand. The whole character, including Peter Parker. You're defending Spider-Man. I'm talking about the moments that made that character so unbelievable, unlike anybody else. And that happened... That doesn't have anything to do with him being a kid. Because the kid him is just the introduction to him. That's him swinging around and like doing cool stuff. Like, well, I can jump real hard. I can climb. Or stuff like that. But that's not him when he's going through his most harrowing moments. He lost Uncle Ben, right? And that wasn't even a kid moment. That I don't care moment, about but, story progression. But that is his character. Because most what, people don't. No. But, I'm telling you, man. That is this his, is what I'm talking I'm not. I'm that, just talking about, like, the way the people problem. think about Spider-Man. That is the problem. That's why... It's not the problem. It's just a, a huge, perspective. That's a huge problem with the character. Because people are never going to understand why people like Spider-Man. That's what a lot of people that don't like Spider-Man. And they're like, oh, he's just like, he swings around New York and he says shit. Whoa, that's so cool. And a lot of people just like, oh, I don't give a fuck about Spider-Man. I like this edgy character because he goes through so much and he transforms. People don't know that Spider-Man goes through a ton of shit and he transforms and he grows. And that's why I think he persists in people's minds. I don't think so, man. I think he persists because he's unique and fun to look at. He's fun to look at, but there are some people that are fun to look at. No. Superman's not fun to look at. I think Superman is very fun to look at. He's really? bright colors. Yeah, when he like flies in a straight line. Yeah, and then it leaves very a neat. fucking red blur behind him. That's cool as shit. Whoa, look oh, at that thing blur. I didn't see. Because it was too fast for me to see because it's unrelatable. You see it. You're like, oh, this is a blur. You see, do, 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 do. His song is hella fucking memorable too. <sighs> You're just out of your mind, man. I, I don't think he's as relatable as Spider-Man, but I do give Superman his credit. Yeah, even the red blur isn't isn't unique. This is literally the Flash also. <laughs> it's just the Flash in the sky, basically. Or is it a blue blur? I think, he's, I think it's a blue blur. I think Spider-Man... I don't know. I don't know what characters... I don't know if the suit leaves a color or if the cape leaves a color. The but, cape, I think, right? It would make more sense. I don't sense. know exactly. I think you're thinking of Sonic is the blue blur. Sonic is the Even blue a blur, blur isn't iconic. That's true. It's, it's just is whatever. Is swinging iconic then? Because George of the Jungle swings before Spider-Man swung. George of the Jungle doesn't swing like Spider-Man swings. I mean, a lot of people swing with their like legs out. Nobody does. No, come on, dude. I would you're say you're tr motions. intentionally trying to make Spider-Man sound like George of the Jungle, which is just not working. I wouldn't it just say doesn't that, work. But I, feel, I, I don't know. I, everyone I see that swings, Every pose, that... every pose that Spider-Man has ever been like drawn in is just... It's, it's just not something. It's, un, it's it's unique, but other people other people are like Spider Man and like their no. their motion because who Daredevil Daredevil swings Daredevil through New York City. Daredevil, Daredevil through New York City, dude. Don't tell me you don't know this. I know he has the stick that swings. He swings through New York City. He may not have all but the motion dude, as Spider Man. Spider Man has the most, not. the most flexibility ever. Exactly. But Daredevil swings through the city. Sweeney's so, Sweeney's so balls deep in the comic book world that he's lost touch with the outside world. I'm not balls deep in the comic world. I know the... the, 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 the that's the thing, because I'm a fan of Spider-Man in his totality. I've absorbed all his media. I played his games when I was little. George of the I Jungle swung books. through the jungle, so Spider-Man could swing through the city. I know Spider-Man. When I say I know Spider-Man, it's not like me knowing, oh, this point of Spider-Man, this dude. I know the character. I am, in fact, someone that if they're going to talk about the character would be the most knowledgeable. Inherently, because I have the most information about You him. have the most information about his this fictional character's life and the, all of the, the events that goes into it. and his motion, his costumes, what but, he does, all that stuff, I have the most information about him. But, I like, about years, it. this is what I'm saying, years of storytelling, like, decades of, like, building a story? Yeah. That's not what makes an icon. 
It's yes, just it not. Is. No. Yes. It's not. Yes, Chris. What makes an icon no, no, is what is that character design? How interesting is that? Chris, what is the suit no, design? How does he all. move? Is it unique? Is it cool? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Chris, is it is it that's different? Not all. That's what I'm sorry, man. That's, that's not how all. it works. That's not all. It if Spider-Man was just, if that's not all. It if is. you took all like, of if like you saying, took all of Spider-Man's story moments and attached them to some guy in a suit. No one would give a shit about that it. That is crazy. I that, promise that you. you. I promise. So, so, I'm so, so sure so of it, actually. So argument wise, so argument wise, okay? Master Chief. Yeah. Master Chief is iconic because he looks cool. But That's not it. Not only that, he's no. also iconic because of his games. The, what his games were, what they created, there's more to him than just what he looks like. Am I right or am I wrong? Master Chief There's looks always cool more Master to what Chief, exists than exactly, what is created. Is that if Master Chief looked cool only, he would have not persisted the way he did if Halo didn't have the effect on the world that it did. But those are good games. Those are good games. That, that had a lot of players because they looked cool and people wanted cool. to play and it, them. And it worked well and it felt good to play. It's like it feels good to read Spider-Man's comments. But it's nobody cool. cares about if Master Chief was like... Six when he was abducted by the fucking no, no one cares UNSC. About that, but no people care about some people his, do. People care about his journey. No, they don't. People do care about his journey. What? That's why I'm asking. Such a loved character. I care about his journey. I care about his journey. But people don't. But a lot of people. This do. is what, you, That's why Halo has held on to such a hard fan base. That's why people give give so. That's why people raged about Halo Four and Five. That's why you raged about Halo Four and Five. I you changed no, shit about him. That was stupid. I, you know, this is a great example actually. The reason why Halo 5 pissed me off wasn't because they made story decisions that I disagreed with. It wasn't because they took the, the character in directions that I didn't want, th want it to go. That's true. But the main problem that I had was, why does this universe not look like the universe that I remember? That why is, is the character design that so fucking true. different? Chris, that is the reason. Chris. And like obviously there were problems with like the gameplay and all that. But for real, but Chris, all I cared about was why did what? my iconic looking character turn into something that looked fucking generic? Why did they change his costume? That's, That's true, That was the big that thing for me. very, very true. You cared about that, but you yeah. also did care about the way they changed the character. If they went I in, did. If they went in and they just changed Arbiter, if they just changed, if Locke killed Arbiter, if Locke beat the dog shot of Arbiter, would you be able to sleep at night? Arbiter isn't. But I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like he's inherent to what Halo is. He's and you care about that character a great deal. Most people, if you think of most people, if you ask them what Halo is, they would not know who Arbiter is. Most people, believe, most people don't even know what Chief's name is. Yeah, exactly. They call him Halo sometimes. I know it makes me sick. What I'm saying, it, it's that, really simple. I, I, what I'm, I'm not saying that like these stories aren't important or whatever. What I'm saying is, the penultimate thing that matters the most. I'm not saying that I like this. But I'm saying the thing that matters the most is how does that character look? Is he cool? Is he interesting? Is that, he unique? That is for foundation. That is. That's for foundation. That's. Only. No, that's it's not. Because it is. Because you have to build the fan base based on you build it based on appearances of the character. But if something's to persist, it's because of all those things in tandem, not just where he was when it started. The stories have to be good, obviously. But there's iconography to these characters, and that uh, that helps those characters stand the test of time. It's not really a matter if those stories are good, because I think a lot of people, even honestly, like genuinely, I think even if Spider-Man's first issues were terrible, I think people would still like him. I don't think he would. I think people would, because the design of that character is so interesting, That's and just a, like the, the, even just the move set, they could have just rebooted that character, and it probably would have found success, because it's just a winning formula, that the, success. That is something we can't really say. It no, is. obviously, it's like hypothetical, you couldn't, you couldn't I know. I don't think it would have worked. I don't think he would have stood the test of time like he did. Do you think if Spider, every, because every character moment, thing. do you think if every character moment that is attributed to Spider-Man, if it was just put on some, some 28-year-old dude who never put on a costume, just some guy in like a, just some guy in like a men's warehouse tux. That could be Do you a, think that, that character? Story, but it wouldn't exist like Spider-Man did because it didn't have the foundation of his, what everything he was. I admit that. It didn't have a costume. That's true. But I, but there's gonna be a point where It's one of the most enduring costumes in superhero history. But the thing is that, but what's crazy is that one, people are gonna, well, there's gonna be a point where, because already it's happening, Miles is more popular than Peter. It's already a thing, you know? And those moments are just gonna disappear because of the, the fact that 
Like it's. Is that true? I don't think that's Miles true. Miles probably more popular than Peter now. I don't think Miles is more popular than Peter. Probably, he's, he's probably getting toward it. I, d- I would say I, maybe it, actually. I would say maybe, considering the game, the success the game got, the success the movies got, the success like a, a lot of things that are happening. I would say Miles is Miles also talked to a demographic that never even got spoken to before. There's yeah, there's no way. I think I think Miles probably. I, I, I don't, don't I, think that's true. I could say maybe not, but it's it's likely. He Here's why that isn't true because those movies probably don't air in China because they're racist. <laughs> I mean, Inter Survivor is so good in China, dude. Huh? It did good in China. I don't. I, did I'm they lighten his skin in China? They probably didn't like the skin, but they were like, ah, uh, when he has the costume on, he can pretend he's not black. I don't think is. I don't think it's close. I think because Peter close. Parker has decades of of association. Dec- decades of association. That's true, Maybe right? if everybody over seventeen dies one day, then Miles will. Not even over seventeen. It's like it's just if everyone just because. Spider Man is going to a, well. There's also racism at the same. This time. goes to show how disconnected Sweden is from society. Because Miles is just not more popular than Peter. It's just not. Miles is he's very fast on his way up. He's po- it. he's very popular. He's very fast. I would say Peter is still the most popular. I would say Peter probably is still the most popular, you know? But that's gonna be a time where Peter is not gonna be the most popular because Spider Man stories are gonna eventually like people they're already running at, at at the bottom of the barrel for his stories and what makes the character so unique. When Miles is full of potential. Yeah, but even like even in in Spider Verse, like one of the biggest things about that movie that everybody loved Aside from all the different like Spider Man coming in, was fucking Jake Johnson's fat fucking yeah they loved him because he was and ar- arguably like he was probably more relatable than kid Spider Man was to a lot of people. I mean to us because we're older because we're, like, we're not like thirty like divorced and fat. Not, no, we're not, but we're older, so we understand like oh the life he lived. That's why I still like Peter more than Miles. I can relate to Miles' heritage entirely because that's my heritage. That's my background. You know what's wild? I genuinely don't know what Miles' origin story is. Miles' origin story is pretty much the same as Peter's. He just got bit by a spider? Yeah. His name's Peter's. Uncle dies, same way as Peter's. Hmm. Yeah. It's just those are... Because those are all so many... I, I don't... I would still say Peter's more popular, but I think the stories matter so greatly because the thing is that... I'm not, I'm not saying the stories don't matter. I'm, I, all I'm saying is that like most people don't read the stories. Yeah, I they just that. don't. Most story. people just see the character and they think that's a cool character, you know. Or they play him in like fucking. Uh, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two or Marvel vs. Capcom one is why I truly like fell in love with Spider Man because the way he moved was so confusing to me, and I tried it for Be- days and it hurt because it hurt he moved me. unique. Yeah, that's very. He true. had a unique, and that's what piqued your interest. That's what. Yeah, that's, that's what like, I'm saying. This but, is what this is what I'm talking about, man. It's all about like you see Spider Man in that fucking Marvel vs. Capcom game. And he's like this, and you're like, "What the fuck is this? Who is this? Why is he doing that?" <laughs> and you just you get curious, and then you dive in, and like maybe maybe you get really far into it, and maybe you read every single story in the universe, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just like play a bunch of video games, and maybe you just like, oh, you see a movie for Tobey Maguire's playing Spider Man. Oh, I recognize Spider Man. He's he's in Marvel's Capcom. Maybe I'll watch that. And then you just sort of like just go through the movies. But maybe you see a TV show, and maybe that's the, as far as it goes. But that is all. But they're all different universes. Not different universes, but the thing is that one. Those are all pieces wise to the end of time. Something can be cool when it comes out. Something can always be cool when it comes out, you know? But if, if everything isn't right, like Spider-Man did it right, Superman did it right, Batman did it right, all those characters did what they had. They came out, and there was enough of things about them and initially to catch people's eyes, to focus on them. But then as the time progressed, they held on to those views because of all the things they intended that made them exist. Right. The foundation is built based I'm, on appearance. I'm just saying iconography matters more to the success or the or the overall recognizability of a character than how good their stories are. There are plenty of great stories that don't get a lot don't get any recognition because I don't know, the art is not all that impressive or maybe um oh, yeah, you know maybe the, the people aren't interested in just like the oh maybe this character just doesn't move interestingly or like there's a bunch of great stories like that. And the reason why Spider Man exists still is because it's a good mix of like, hey, here's good storytelling, but also here's one of the most iconic characters that you could even perceive of. Like just the, everything from the way that he moves to the, the, the locomotion, the way that he speaks. The, even just the dichotomy between like him kind of bullying people as Spider-Man and being like a, like a little bitch as Peter Parker. Even that, that in and of itself is like not something that I've seen elsewhere. Yeah, all of, all Everything of about him is exceedingly unique, and that is why, even without his stories to back him up, I think that's why he's those, endured for as long as he has. Those, all, thing, all those things came from his stories as well. I understand, but like, it's not. These are these are all pieces. They, they, I'm just trying to say these are all pieces of one portrait. Right. 
His portrait is because of all that. The very first few strokes are what he looks like. And that's what that defines. That defines the character, though. That's and that's why most people think of Kid Spider-Man. I think I think those defining. There's several defining moments of a character, and I think his his kid self is one of the most important. And I would I would stand on that entirely. But that's not even close to all he is. I'm not saying it's all he is. I'm saying it is all he is to a lot of people. Yeah. It's just true. I agree. It's just real. It's just the real it's world. It's unfortunate because people just don't know all... There's a reason why people have loved Spider-Man for six years. I'm aware of adult Spider-Man. Even, and even to me, like when I think of Spider-Man, I think of like, yeah, he's just a kid. I don't think of Spider-Man. I think of that line. He's a kid, not, not, much, not much older than my son. And it's just like, that's, that's what... That's movie, right? That's right, movie. but it's also just accurate. It's like how that... It's, it's the reason that character stuck out in the first place. And it's why he kind of still sticks out. Like, even if... Even if you put like... Um, like even in like a new movie, if you had him as like a real kid, not like Tom Holland, who's like Tom Holland's like a, a mess. That that whole thing is like that. That is not. That is beyond just like a lot of people are like, oh, it's a problem because he's kid Spider Man. It's not. It's it's a problem because they just threw him into this universe way too late, and he's just no. a, an Iron Man lackey, that and is the biggest it's it's Spider-Man. just. The, the the MCU Spider Man is not great, but it's not bad. Bad. Yeah. It's not not great because he's a kid. I, I, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I, I think it's just the way that they shoehorned him in, and like it, I don't even think he was really shoehorned. I I think everything is finely done with him. I just think that they're missing points about him that make him so important. Spider Man taking the suit from Tony. The fact that he asked for the suit back. That moment really hurt me. Because I was like, that's not what you do. That's not what Spider-Man would do. He'd be like, well, I guess I just don't have a suit. I gotta just do without the I suit. I don't know. Those movies are fun and everything. It's just like, I don't know. Because he's, cause he's, he's, he's an intelligent guy. Like, that's, a part, that's a huge part of Spider-Man's character. You ask Spider-Man, like, what's the interesting thing about Spider-Man? Oh, he's, he's, he wears glasses. He's really smart. He can climb walls. He has powers. People are always going to say he's really fucking smart. Isn't that the point of Spider-Man learning from his immaturity? No. I don't even care how he acts. It's I, it's like I because he's a kid. Like I understand he's gonna do stupid stuff. Even if he's like super smart, I understand he's gonna react stupidly to certain things. And like maybe he's gonna act out of emotion more than like pure intelligence. Um, that just makes sense to me. That's a little bit more relatable. I understand that. It's just he he just feels weird in that universe at this point. I, I think that like it, in the MCU, it shouldn't be Kid Spider Man. I would say that like it like at this stage. In the MCU, it should be like. But how are you gonna explain fucking Spider? That's kind of the problem. They they're kind of they kind of wrote themselves in a bit of a hole where it's like they they went through the whole MCU and then they were like, we gotta have Spider-Man in here. But it's like, oh, but then where has he been? It's like, ah, fuck. Okay, well we have to introduce him then as an origin. And then like he had to be a kid and like he was a kid when Thanos showed up. And like, all this stuff is like weird because most people when they think of Spider-Man like before the MCU, no one ever thought about Spider-Man and Thanos. Like no one gave it. No one. No one. That's fucking a, that, no one gave a, a big, shit. That's a big moment, but like... That's not a big moment to most... It, a, your average person does not know that Spider-Man fought Thanos. I mean, every, if, if you know about... Only now because of the movie. I promise you. If you know about Thanos, you know that Spider-Man fights him. He was there. Most people don't know about Thanos. Most people didn't know about Thanos. Yeah, I guess. Thanos was not remotely popular before the movie. I had no fucking clue. That's I remember... So I, remember I, I remember when Avengers came out and I was just like... That's so crazy because you're from New York and comic book culture is so huge in New York. That's wild. I didn't That's like comics. So why? But it's, it's not even like liking comics. It's the fact that how big comic book culture is in New York City, particularly. It's a huge part of the culture of New York City. That is like a huge focus of, of, of just... That's, our, that's our, one of our forms of literature from New York City, I'm sure, is comic books. Most that's people didn't know every, Thanos, man. I, I feel like a lot of people didn't know Thanos. And I'll agree with you on that because a lot of people just probably didn't focus on I would on say comics. 90% of people didn't know who Thanos was. I wouldn't say 90 that's I a, swear to you, I promise. I, would say I promise like, you. I would say I promise you. I would say he's not in any games. games. He's not in any Marvel he's in, games. He's in Marvel games. Where? He's also in Alliance, dude. Ultimate Alliance? Yeah. No, Ultimate He's in Marvel vs. Capcom. One of the most popular Marvel games of all time. What? Marvel vs. Capcom? Which one? Not two. two. Absolutely he's in he's two. He's in two? I don't remember him in two. He has the ge- he used the gems in two. I don't remember two. He was in two? I don't remember that. 110%. I never used him. I never even saw him in the character roster. Dude, there's so many characters, I'm not surprised. Yeah. And- there's characters in that game that I had no clue. There's a bunch of Dark Stalker characters in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, this guy. Yeah, he looks ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, he looks so silly. He looks ridiculous. Well, no, that looks kind of hard by it. That's amazing art. 
but what he the way he moves around yeah he looks, looks so stupid, stupid in this <laughs> i remember i didn't even think about it at all i was like ah, oh, i'm not picking that fucking fat idiot i picked him when i found out who he was and i was like oh that's cool i would say maybe like 75 people don't know who thanos is i would go for a solid <clears> 70 <throat> don't know who he is yeah i had no idea he was in marvel vs. capcom i had no fucking because clue think of how big think of how big it was when they revealed he was thanos people went crazy dude what do you mean when they revealed thanos was in the movies at the end of first avengers it was like fine. Well, here's. I guess he, I'll beat myself off, and he grabs a glove. That wasn't at the end of Avengers. It's Avengers one, yeah. No. When he grabs a glove, it's Avengers one. Is it? When he Age grabs a glove, no, it's Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. The 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 first one, just ended with uh, that Kree guy going or that fucking whatever that alien guy was up to the guy in the chair, and then he just kind of stared at him. Okay, that was his, that was his first appearance, yeah. <clears throat> but. It's fine. I'll beat myself. Off. But no, like I don't know, man. I I think. I, I just think it's. Uh, it's just one of those things where when everybody, when that, that Thanos thing at the end came at, at the beginning of, uh, or at the end of Avengers, right? When that moment happened, most people didn't know what the fuck what was going on. They didn't, because I didn't. And I remember, like, I, I only know about it because I looked it up after. Because I was like, who the fuck was that? And I was just, like, curious. Well, that's a lot of people, right? A lot of people look it up after, right? And they, right, they, right. they go into the, the delve into Well, not a lot of people do that, though. A lot of people do that. That's 100 percent percent. Oh well, I guess a lot of people, but I don't think the majority of people do that. A lot of people do it. I think I think the majority of people do it actually. I don't think so. Think I think how, I think, think how popular the MCU is, and then usually when a character gets introduced, like I'm not even kidding. If you type in the first two letters of the character's name on Google, you'll just be shown the character from the universe, and they'll go to the Wikipedia, the Marvel Wiki, and you'll see a bunch of shit about him. I realized that when they did it's that. Because there's because the there's a lot of people searching, but I don't think the majority of people do that. I think a lot of people do that, dude. I, I'm not saying would, a lot of people don't. I would, I would, I'm saying the majority don't. I, would, I don't know. A majority. That's such a weird thing to say because, like, I can't even say majority because I don't know what the fuck the majority. That's just such a, a, a weird thing to put on the majority of masses, you know? I mean, I guess. There's, like, the majority of people do that. And it's like, what the fuck is the majority exactly? China, I guess, too. The thing is, it's just, like, we have friends who are very, very into comics. I'm probably, like, the least into comics out of everybody yeah. that we know. I would say it's, it's... So I'm your window into the way that normal people kind of watch these things. But you also have a particular... Ha- a fancy of not giving a fuck about things that are popular. You have to admit that. That's not true. I would say you are. What do you mean? I would say you won't disregard it. Maybe like, like Imagine Dragons. No, I wouldn't say you wouldn't. You would disregard it, but you're like, ah, okay, and you you are that kind of person where you're like, ah, you're like me. You're like me when it comes to like internet stuff. Like I just don't give a fuck. Chris, about do you know who the Eternals are? Not a clue. Yeah. No idea. A lot of people don't know who the Eternals are. That's not even crazy to think about. The Eternals, dude. I know who the Eternals about because of Comics Explained, and I'm a huge comic book fan. I have like six thousand dollars of comic books in my bedroom, and I found out who they were like maybe seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, I don't hate things because they're popular. Not because they're popular, but you have the ability to disregard things that are popular. Not hate it, just like not really care too much about fully div- diving into it and figuring out about it. Yeah, like I didn't, I didn't watch Falcon and Winter Soldier or Wandavision. Like well, I, I just you didn't, didn't really even watch Invincible. You watching because we were all watching it exactly, but you weren't like you wouldn't have watched that. You would be like, oh, that thing's out. Cool, maybe I'll watch it eventually. But that's I watched it, but you didn't watch it. Like we how to explain it? I watched it kind of out of order. Like you watched it, like you hearing about it and that being very thing that's brought up online wouldn't have particularly rushed your ideas of looking at it. You would have been like, oh, that's there, and I'll get it to it when I get to it. Not man, I really gotta see this. Yeah. You're more of that. I'm more of like, a, oh, that's a character I like. I gotta see this. Yeah, no, I have no... You have no allegiance to things where you just have to... Unless it's Castlevania. You'll watch that in Harvey. Castlevania's great. <laughs> exactly.